So let's say you have 20 minutes to practice. What do you do? How do you practice in 20 minutes so that it is a phenomenal practice that you know is bringing you forward, you're doing the good work, and you know that you're getting better, you're on track, but you've only got 20 minutes, so what do you actually do in this practice? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video, the perfect 20 minute practice for your guitar, for classical guitar specifically, but you can generalize this if you'd like to over to electric or to acoustic or anything else that you're playing. It's just good practice strategy. So I'm Alan Matthews from Classical Guitar Shed, and we are going to dive into a phenomenal 20 minute practice. All right, so before we get into the specifics of what to do, let's just talk overarching strategy. So with only 20 minutes, we need to bounce from one thing to the next fairly frequently. We don't wanna just do one thing for 20 minutes. We want to touch in on many areas of our playing so that each of those areas can get better. So where do we actually learn? We learn in our sleep. We practice during the day, we do something, and then it's during our sleep that things go from short-term into long-term memory. And that's where all those synapses get built and we really get better. So the learning happens while we sleep. So the goal of a practice then is to seed that time, that skill, so that when we're sleeping, it has something to do and it can actually put that good work into long-term knowing. So then what is it that we're actually doing with our hands during that time? So then for each practice, when we're practicing, we want to reinforce really good movements and fundamentals. We want to focus on correct repetitions. Instead, we don't wanna just noodle around and, and do stuff and make a bunch of mistakes. We want to just tell our brains, we want to be programming that computer to know this is what's right. Do this in the future. This is how you wanna play in the future. That's what we're doing in this 20 minutes is telling the brain that. We're just reinforcing, we're saying, this, 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 and not doing very much of the bad examples. Because your brain's gonna learn either one. If you play things and play something 10 times wrong and one time correct, it's not gonna remember the correct one and say, that's the one to learn from. It's going to remember the mistakes. And so next time you play it, you'll also make those same mistakes because that's what you've been practicing. So instead of doing that in our short practice, we really wanna focus on quality. So we don't wanna do a whole bunch of repetitions on any one thing. Instead, we want some really high quality reps. We're training our hands here. So with that, let's dive into the actual practice. So the curtain rises, we pick up our guitar. What do we do? We just picked up the guitar, we just sat down. <sighs> what do we actually do? This first few minutes, ideally, is more or less the same every time you practice. And so what is it that you're actually doing? It could be just about anything, but there are a few guidelines that I can give you. First off is that for the first few minutes of your practice, let's say three or four minutes, then ideally you're doing something that's very simple. It's something that you've decided beforehand. I use this little five note scale fragment. It's a little minor key. It's just one, three, four, and then two, four. There's nothing special about this. It's just something, right? It's just something to be doing. And with this, I can think about my hand position, my sitting position. I can feel the weight in the seat. I can feel how I'm using my neck muscles and my jaw and my, my tongue, my shoulders, my eyes, all of these things. So it is awareness building. These first few minutes are awareness building. Fingers right behind the frets, right on the fingertips, releasing as much tension as possible, becoming aware of as much tension as possible. With the right hand, it's using really intentional right hand movements. If you're studying this, then you'll know what to do. If you're not and you would like to, then head on over to Classical Guitar Shed and we would love to work with you there on your technique. So working with your right hand technique, reinforcing how you want to play whenever you're playing fancy pieces of music. So your hand position, your form, your movements, all of these things. How are you touching the strings? Where are you touching the strings? Are you aware of your fingertip on the string? All of these details. The first few minutes are about touching in on these. 
what that does is it sets you up for a very specific intentionality in your practice. So instead of just noodling, you'll be doing specific things. You'll be noticing all of these details. And that's what you want your brain to know while you're sleeping is do it this way. Play right behind the fret, curve your hand like this, keep your, your little finger over the, over the strings, all of these little things, these first few minutes, that's the thing. It doesn't need to be fast. Ideally, it's only as fast as you can really pay attention. And so if it's only one note every few seconds, because you're thinking about all these different things, so much the better, it's wonderful. Okay, so that's getting started. So now we come to the second area of our practice. We've had our nice warm up. we've set our intentions, we've really tuned in with our awareness. So now we're gonna work on technique. Technique is improving your hands. You got your left hand technique, you got your right hand technique. This is the mechanics of playing. So that means that we're challenging our technique to get better. For each area that we're talking about, there needs to be a challenge. If there's not a challenge, if we're not just outside of our comfort zone, we're not gonna learn anything new. Whenever we get a challenge and we meet it, we get this little shot of dopamine into our system. And we love dopamine. And so our brain says, give me more of that, give me more of that. And so that work then, that's called learning. Our brain rewires to try to get more of that dopamine. And so the way to do that is to ride this edge of hard, but not too hard. And the way to do that is to set specific goals for yourself, specific little challenges, such as I'm going to do these hammer-ons right behind the fret, and I'm going to release the tension in my hand after each one. So even though this doesn't look like much, there is a very clear right and wrong and I can shoot for that in my practice. It could be anything, it could be scales, like I talked about the little scale fragment earlier. There is a specific right hand exercise that you're doing, a specific left hand exercise, and ideally we bounce between several of these, just doing each for one to two minutes. And so it could be a scale. Chord practice is another one, switching between chords. A great way to do this is to shoot for three times in a row perfectly with whatever it is that you're doing. If you're doing a, a finger walking exercise and you know that I want my fingers just behind the fret, I want a steady pace that I'm going at here. I want the rhythm steady, in other words. I want my other fingers to stay low to the strings. Then you can look at this and go up and down and then the goal could be, I want to be able to do this up and down three times perfectly. And ideally, if you've got a short practice, start with your weakest fingers. So you would start with three and four probably and train those first. And then if you don't have time to get to your one and two finger, then that's okay. You'll get to it some other time. And those fingers are stronger anyway. So train those, but you're paying attention to the specific details of how you're doing it. You're setting challenges for yourself that you can meet. They're hard, but they're not so hard that you can't do it, but you have to give it your all to get there. This is real, you will learn a lot by riding this challenge skills sweet spot. So it might go without saying, but it, I'm gonna say it, and that is that speed will undermine this. If you try to play really fast, or if you just let yourself go, speed creates the illusion of perfection. And so you'll be making mistakes, but you won't notice them because your fingers will be moving too fast. That's not good practice. If you've only got 20 minutes, Keep it reined in and keep your attention on specific things so that you can continue to get better. So to recap here, technique practice, switching chords, doing your scales, right hand patterns, right hand I and M alternation for scale stuff if you're playing with your fingers and classical guitar technique, slurs, exercises, strength building, accuracy building, these are technique practices. The next section that we can work on is new music or testing our memory with things that we're learning. So if we're learning a new piece of music, you might then review if you're memorizing it, then test yourself and play it slowly from memory, again slowly, without looking at the music. Before you look at the music, test yourself with it. So test yourself on, your, on the stuff that you've already learned. And then if you're gonna learn a new part of it, then limit yourself to a very small section. 
and then work on just that small section memorizing it and don't give yourself more than, you know, a few minutes on this five tops or else because you can easily it's exciting right it's so exciting to play new music and so it's so easy to spend all of your time on the new piece because that's what's exciting that's the novelty and so we really wanted to do that but keep it reined in only spend a few minutes and specifically on a small section and really work that small section the next section of our practice the next part of our practice is detailing the rough spots in the pieces that we already play. So ideally you have a collection of these. And these are the spots that when you play a piece of music, you stumble over them, or they're not up to the speed that you want them, or they're just the spots that give you trouble. And so we want to work those spots. And here's how to do that, is that within a piece of music, you go through and you play each spot slowly, just once, one time only. So if you have, So let's just say that that's a spot. Stop right there, don't play it again, and then go to the next spot. And that might be the next spot, and then go to the next one, and then the next one, and then if you want to, you can do a loop around and do them again. But in, when you're playing the piece of music, you won't be able to play it twice, or three times, or four times before you get it right. So instead, just give yourself one time, go through it slowly, go to the next. So then if you have a piece of music that has five, tricky spots in it, then you would play the first one, then the second one, then th you play through all five, and then you can play through all five again, two or three times if you'd like to, and then go to the next piece of music. But each spot, you've only got one time to play it, and so you really pay attention to all those things, and all you're trying to do is drop that seed into there, that one little drop of water into the bucket that eventually will fill up. So at night, when you're sleeping, your subconscious mind will be churning on that particular spot. And one, after a few days of this, that spot will just be much cleaner. The big challenge with the detailing the spots is that probably the part right after the tricky spot, you're probably really good at that. And so you're gonna want to play it. You're gonna just want to keep playing. You're gonna wanna keep going. And so it takes real control to pull back the reins and really just stay focused on just that one little spot and then the next one and then the next one. Super self-discipline to do that because you want to just play the piece. Well, maybe I'll just play through it once and then I'll do this. Don't do it. Do your best to keep it reined in and just really practice instead of playing. All right, chances are that was 20 minutes right there. Like by the time you do this, so by the time you have what, three or four minutes of warm up, and then you work on a bunch of different little technique areas. You touch in on your new music that you're playing or something that you're working on memorizing, and then you detail your tricky spots in your pieces. Chances are your time is up. And so put your guitar down and it's good. Later, if you want to, you can pick it up and just play for fun. But in a 20 minute practice, you don't wanna spend 25% of your time just new, just playing right? Maybe once in a while, if you just need, if you just need that boost for yourself and you seriously cannot pick it up and do it any other time, then once in a while, just sitting down and just kind of just playing your pieces can be really fun and that's okay. But in a general and an everyday practice, 20 minutes, you're just doing work the whole time and you're bouncing. You're never spending more than a minute or two on any given thing, except maybe if you're learning some new music, then maybe there's a couple more minutes. So here are four common mistakes for short practices. Number one is treating it as play. We were just talking about this. So instead of practicing, you play. And the, the difference here is we want very high attention to detail, very strong awareness of body awareness and finger awareness, and we wanna be all in on playing. We don't wanna just noodle around and enjoy our, our playing. That's playing, we wanna practice. Number two is hurrying. I only have 20 minutes, so I better just play everything really fast and bounce from one thing to the next. That energy is not going to get you where you wanna go. Instead, for each, set, each thing that you're doing, you want to set a very clear challenge and then work for it. It's just like reps at a gym. You want to 
have some weight on the bar. So you need the challenge. Otherwise, when you're sleeping, it won't register. Your brain won't register that as something that it needs to learn. It's just that was just some fun stuff that you did. Number three mistake is spending too much time in any one area and eating up all your time with one thing. If you're gonna do that, then let it be technique. Let it be your mechanics and your training your hands. Some days it might just, you just might wanna spend your whole 20 minutes on scales and that's going to actually help you. you. Like you will learn with that. If you do that all the time, it's not good practice, but don't just play the whole time. Instead, drop into a whole bunch of different areas so that all those areas raise. And number four, playing too fast, which just short, short changes the entire thing. So you wanna keep it slow. You wanna keep your awareness sharp enough that you, you can actually know what's going on. So playing too fast can just get in the way of that and just think, you'll think everything's fine, but it won't be. And then whenever you wake up the next day or a month later, you won't be all that much better because you've just been playing and not practicing. All right, this has been 20 minutes of practice strategy for you. So if you've only got 20 minutes, just to review this, high awareness warm up, really checking in with your body, checking in with your uh, your fundamentals and your technique, your movement, your form, your positioning, and then your technique practice, which is building skills. It's challenging yourself on your chords, your exercises, your scales, your right hand patterns and right hand movements. And then the next section is new music or testing your memory, challenging your memory. And that you're doing very specifically as well for a very small amount of the music. And then the next one would be detailing the tricky spots in your existing pieces. And for that, you can use the, the just cycles of single takes. So playing it one time through, but then cycling through a bunch of them and then looping back if you would like to, um, or spending just a few seconds on each and then doing each one of them a few times. But it's better just to do it one time each, like we talked about. All right, that is a practice. Best of luck to you. If you'd like to bump up your playing, then we would love to work with you over in the Woodshed Classical Guitar program at classicalguitarshed.com. We have a wonderful time over there. The, all the members, we get together in community events, and it's really fun to work together to boost all of our playing. So enjoy your day. Best of luck in your short 20-minute practice. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.